Okay, let's start working on our make a pizza drawing assignment. So we just want to take a look at the uh, assignment requirements. We're going to download the lesson files, click on a link that will take us to an online tutorial that will show us step by step how to create our pizza using Illustrator. We'll take a look at the assignment examples. So we have a start file that we're going to be using and then we have an, uh, an example of what the end product should look like. The start file will come with some layers already created and named. The end file you'll be adding layers to that so there should there should be a layer for each element, um, each topping on your pizza, layer for the pizza crusts, etc. It's good to take a look at some of the instructions below the start and end example. We're going to be starting at step 11 of this online tutorial. Here's another link. Because I've already created the tablecloth and the wood pizza pan for you. Now this is something that if you wanted to start at step one and do the um, tablecloth and the pan on your own, if you want to practice creating your own wood texture for example, then you're certainly welcome to do that. You don't have to use my file. But for this assignment, what I'm mainly concerned is the pizza itself with the toppings. So step 11, assuming you want to use the file that's provided, this is where we're starting. And then there's a few hints and corrections for some subsequent, subsequent steps. We have the submission example so you're going to create an assignment folder you'll have your original AI file that you turn in with with the layers intact and then you'll submit an image also a JPEG image so the first thing we're going to do is to click on our lesson files download those we can drag those files to our hard drive for this example I'm going to just save mine to my desktop let's take a look inside alright so we've got a couple of images chili pepper JPEG pizza leaf JPEG and then we have our pizza start file that includes the pizza pan and tablecloth let's create a lesson folder so we'll use our standard naming convention your last name underscore VCD 1015 underscore 06 because this is lesson 6. And let's, um, let's open up Illustrator. All right, let's go to File, Open, navigate to our Lesson Files folder, open the pizza start.ai. AI stands for Adobe Illustrator. And we have our start file, but we don't want to save over our start file, so we're going to rename this. Let's Go to File, Save As, navigate to our Lesson folder that we just created, and we'll just call this um, your last name, underscore pizza.ai. Make sure Format is Adobe Illustrator. Choose Save. All right. so now we can 
go ahead and open up our tutorial. We'll just take a look at the tutorial. So we have an example of the final image, just like in Blackboard. Step one shows you how to set up your document, make the tablecloth, make the pizza pan or cutting board. So again, this is something that you can do as an extra if you would like, but for the purposes of this assignment, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to step 11, and this is where we're going to start by making the pizza crust. And I'm going to move this out of the way now. All right, so remember that we can we can zoom in if we need to. And let's make sure that we have our layers window open. We always want to make sure that we are aware of how we have our file constructed using layers and what layer is active. The layers that were given that are already in the start document have a layer each for the um, different parts. So there's a bevel on this wood board. There's the wood texture. There's the cutting board itself. And then there's the tablecloth. And these layers are all locked because we really shouldn't have to make any changes to them. So we're going to start working on a new layer. We're going to choose Create New Layer. And let's name this layer, we can name it Crust. The next thing that you want to do is to choose the Ellipse tool. Now. Mine is already visible in the tool panel, but if yours is not, so if your rectangle tool is visible, then what you want to do is to click and hold on that with your mouse and then choose Ellipse Tool. Go ahead and choose uh, Shift and Option or hold down Shift Option. Click and drag from the approximate center of your cutting board to make a perfectly circular crust. Don't worry if it's not in the exact center of your board. In fact, the Example in the uh, tutorial shows it a little bit offset, kind of a wabi-sabi idea, which is Japanese for uh, the beauty of imperfection, which, in other words, we, we don't want it to be perfect, otherwise it'll, it won't look realistic. With your circle still selected, go ahead and choose the gradient tool, double-click it, for the type, we want radial, and we want to double click the black gradient slider, this little tab here that looks black, double click that. Let's choose from color mode, we'll choose web safe RGB, and then we'll type in a six digit color code. So F8991C, and then let's click on the white, double click it, again choose WebSafe RGB, and we're going to type in FFF579. Okay, so we're starting to get a crust, but what we want is we want it to be golden or look more uh, cooked or golden around the edge. So let's take our left hand gradient slider and move it a little bit more to the right. And this makes the gradient start farther out from the center. And it needs to go quite a bit farther.
All right, so let's get out of that. We'll choose the selection tool. Uh, one last thing is that we, by default on mine, I have a blue stroke on my crust that you can see, and we don't want a stroke on our crust. So I'm going to select the crust again, go to the stroke swatch, and choose the none swatch so that I have no stroke on my crust. Let's make sure we have this shape selected again. Let's go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, and then type in some settings. Now I'm going by the settings that are in the tutorial, so you would do the same. All right, we can also check our preview box. And let's change the color. So I'm going to type in AA6536. And hit OK. So now we have a crust with a shadow. Okay, now we need to make a smaller circle inside of our pizza crust. So let's choose the ellipse tool again. We'll click and drag uh, shift option from the center point. We can Double click gradient and let's move our slider back to the right a bit. All right, so the next step is we need to put a highlight on this crust. And if your uh, inner circle isn't exactly where you want it. Again, you can use the arrow keys to nudge it around into position. All right, we'll choose the ellipse tool again. Find our center point, shift option, click drag to about the middle of this outer crust or a little bit toward the edge. And let's make the stroke white and the fill none. Okay, so let's go to, um, let's make it four points. Whoops. Four points. And let's go to Object, Expand. Hit OK. Then go to Effect. Blur, Gaussian Blur. Let's try the preview. Now, the tutorial says to make your blur 10 pixels, and when we do that, it looks like it disappears, and actually it's, it's too diffuse, so that it's so diffuse that it almost looks invisible. So I would suggest going to about four pixels instead, and that way you can see the more of a a white highlight and hit OK. Let's change the blend mode on this. So click on your crust highlight, go to gradient, choose transparency, and instead of normal, choose overlay. All right, now we're ready to make our cheese. This is step 14. So we're going to choose the pen tool. And let's put a stroke temporarily so we can see what we're doing. And let's, um, let's turn off the, or make the fill none, just so that we don't get confused while we're 
um, drawing our cheese outline. And we can even zoom in a bit too. So we're just going to create sort of a random melty looking edge. All right, so now we can, let's fill it with white. Let's make the stroke none. So we have some cheese. If you're not completely happy with your shape, you can modify it. You could go to the direct selection tool. You might want to zoom in find the anchor points and you can you can move them you can modify these handles drag them around to make different shapes Okay, let's apply a gradient to this shape now. So we want a linear gradient. And we want to have three gradient sliders, one at either end and one in the middle. So let's click right below the center point. You can see a little plus appears. And we'll make that center gradient slider. And we're going to type in the color codes that are specified in the tutorial to create our color for our cheese. All right, so what the way I had it was that by default, this was set, um, the gradient had been set on the stroke swatch, and I reversed them. So when I um, clicked on the fill, it came forward and, and it applied my gradient. And we want our stroke to be none. So we have only a gradient fill and no stroke. All right, so let's make sure that we have our shape selected, our cheese shape. Let's open the gradient tool again, choose the transparency tab, make sure that our blend mode is screen, and we'll make the opacity 30%. Now that I created my cheese, I, I, I just am going to do a couple adjustments. I'm going to make mine just a little bit larger so it goes closer to the edge of the pizza. And then what I really would like to do is to put the cheese on a separate layer, which I should have done from the start. I should have created a layer, named it cheese, and what I'm going to do in order to get my cheese on that layer is to command C, command X to cut, click my cheese layer to select it, shift command V, and now my cheese is on the cheese layer. So since I don't want to accidentally select my crust again, I'm going to lock that layer. And if I'm happy with this cheese, which I'm pretty happy with it, I'm going to lock that layer as well. If I wanted to make a change to any of these layers, I could always unlock it and, and select that layer and start working on it. But right now we're ready to make our first topping. The first thing that we need to make is a chili pepper. 
So we can draw our chili pepper off to the side here on our on our document. And before I forget, let's make a new layer. We could call this chili or chili pepper or pepper, whatever you want, something descriptive. And let's choose our JPEG image that was provided. We'll go to File, Place, find our Lesson Files folder, choose the Chili Pepper JPEG, and then place that on our document. Now, we're not actually going to place this image. You can see the image itself has a white background, but we're going to trace this, we're going to use this image as a template to trace over. So what we could do is make a copy of our chili pepper layer and let's double click oops, let's double click on that and um, we'll, we'll choose dim images so I'm on the lower chili pepper layer dim images to 50% and then let's let's lock it and then delete the image from the copy let's zoom in we're going to draw over our chili pepper image using the pen tool it's a good idea to get in as close as as you can so you can really see what you're doing um, I'm going to turn off the snap to pixel option so that my I have better control of my pen let's make sure that our um, fill is at none and our stroke is uh, let's make our stroke black this is temporary so we can see what we're doing. Again, zoom in if you need to. And then let's just start drawing. We're tracing over our image. All right, we've got a very thick line here. So let's, um, let's go like 0.25 and then start again. All right, so I've got a little blip at the end. So I'll go to my direct selection tool and drag this handle, move it so that it looks a little bit better. Okay, we're going to fill this with a gradient, so let's make sure that the fill swatch is active by clicking on it. Double click the gradient tool. Now, we're going to choose linear for the type, and if in your gradient tool you still had the extra gradient slider and these colors are different, uh, they're the same colors as the cheese, that's okay. We can get rid of this central gradient slider by clicking it and choosing the trash can. And then Whatever colors that these little um, tabs happen to be, you can just double click and then you're going to um, choose web safe RGB and then just type in the color code that's been given.
All right, and let's change the angle of this to this uh, blend to 45 degrees. And uh, let's just modify this little um, contextual slider here so that we have more of a obvious difference between the darker red below and the lighter red on top. All right, so now Let's go to the Selection tool, make sure the shape is still selected, go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, and then I'm just using the settings that are given in the tutorial, so you would do the same. We can we can also use the preview to see how this looks. Modify the color. All right, so we can get a sense of what our pepper is starting to look like. One thing we want to make sure we do is to um, remove this stroke. We don't want a black stroke on our pepper, so let's just choose none. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is draw our stem. So we're just going to use the pen tool again. Let's make sure just for the purposes of drawing, we're going to have fill at none and stroke on black so we can easily see what we're doing. Let's make the stroke quarter point, go to the pen tool, and we're going to start below this edge so that when we move the stem object to the back or behind the pepper, it's just going to get blocked out. So we don't end up with some sort of a gap between the stem and the pepper. And again, I'm just using this JPEG image as a template or guide to trace my own drawing. All right, make sure you close your shape. Let's um, make sure that our stroke is at none. Make sure fill is active. Double click the gradient tool. Choose linear. Let's double click the uh, left hand swatch. Make sure we're at web safe RGB. Type in the color code that's given. Click the other one, type in the color code that's given for that. All right, the angle should be 45 again. And that looks about right. I don't think we need to do any adjustments. Maybe I'll drag this uh, right hand swatch all the way over. Okay, so now we're going to um, bring the pepper, the red part of the pepper to the front so that it covers over this little overlap. So I selected it, I'm going to right click, choose arrange and bring to front. All right, so our pepper is starting to look like something. Okay, so we're gonna put a highlight shape on our pepper. Make sure that your pepper 
object or stem object are not selected. You don't want those active. And let's uh, make sure that our, just for the purposes of drawing so we can see what we're doing, let's make sure the stroke is on black, the fill is on none. Let's set the stroke to uh, 0.25. Go to the pen tool and we're just going to draw a shape. And I'm again following the tutorial using the illustration in the tutorial as, as an example of what I should be doing. So basically we're making a highlight on our pepper. So we should have a shape that looks something like this. Make sure you close it. All right, let's, um, let's take the black stroke off, make it none, choose the fill, and select white. Let's go to Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Choose Preview. And um, according to the tutorial, we have 5.3 pixels. You know, again, that might be a little bit diffuse. Maybe we want to make ours a little bit less than that. All right, zoom out if you need to. All right, so um, maybe this is a little bit too intense. Uh, let's click on that and choose our gradient again. Go to the transparent tab. For the blend mode, choose screen. And for the opacity, let's make that 40%. All right, that looks better. Okay, so now might be a good time to save. Let's go ahead and file save. Now, we don't need this original chili pepper drawing, so remember that our, our, our image, remember that we have an image on a layer below that we were using as a template. Let's go ahead and just um, drag that to the trash. Now we have our chili pepper drawing. Let's click and drag to select all the objects and let's group it. So right click, choose group. We can zoom out. Now what we want to do is drag our chili pepper onto our pizza and start placing these around, so we're going to, um, we can resize these a bit, hold the shift key to, to maintain the proportions. Okay, so you can copy this, Command C, Command V, make sure you're in your selection tool, drag it over, rotate it. You don't want any of these going the exact same direction. You want them to look random as if they were randomly scattered on this pizza. Uh, they should all have a slightly different size so you can resize them. You can also, um, in addition to rotating, you could have some going in the opposite direction. So you could choose the reflect tool and click and drag and it'll change the direction. So some should be larger, some should be smaller. You want at least a dozen of these or 12. Okay, the next step, we're going to create an onion. 